Alright, let's try this. Oh yeah. This actually works. Hey Ty here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. So last week, Google actually announced Android XR, which is gonna be the competitor to the special computing platform of the Apple Vision Pro and also Meta Horizon. So yeah, competition is coming. Unfortunately, we didn't see much. So Australia was actually able to show the headset in news, but Google actually released the Android emulator and uh, we can actually see Android XR right in action with all the different details about it. So yeah, I installed it on my PC and I decided to use the Apple Vision Pro to actually try to emulate a bit what it means to actually use Android XR with the touch and also uh, using your eyes like it happens on the Apple Vision Pro, of course. So let's discover this new operating system Android XR together in this video. Let's get into it. All right, then here we are in our Android emulator. As you can see, we're actually using Moonlight to stream my PC and have a big window in front of us to actually represent a bit what is going to be uh, Android XR. Because yeah, we don't have the possibility to make it in a VR just yet, but we can kind of emulate the use of it with the Apple Vision Pro because we have the eye tracking that probably is gonna be also in the Samsung uh, XR headset and of course like hand tracking like you see right now. So uh, it's kind of an emulation of an emulation to see how it will be in VR, but yeah. This is Android XR, and as you can see, it's very similar to Android, as Vision OS is very similar to iPad OS. So yeah, we have uh, our first page with the applications that we bent over there, like our home page, and scrolling on the side, we actually have all the other apps that we have available uh, on the system. Uh, we can add them, by the way, to the front page, like holding on it. So yeah, the app is gonna be there and at that point we can just click on it and actually open it. It's not gonna work as we don't have uh, the Google services and everything over here, but we can actually see how these apps interact with the environment. Uh, they're gonna be created like um, on Vision OS, like big windows to actually look at and we can move them around from every direction as you can see very similar to what we have on the meta os meta horizon os as they call it right now what we have on top of it though is a shadow on the bottom as you can see and that is uh, very cool indeed uh, like we have on vision os i wonder how the xr2 processor is gonna be able to handle it uh, but yeah, other than that, we can also, of course, resize the apps and move them in space, something that we can do right now, looking at the corner, and yeah, this transparent thing is gonna come up, and uh, we can decide aspect ratio and everything, and then interact with it uh, like a, it's our phone, a tablet in front of us. Um, over here, we have uh, the app that we are using that's pretty ugly to be honest uh, the ability to actually suspend the app because uh, I don't know how it's gonna work with the <laughs> uh, with the buttons for it but here we have three buttons like uh, it's happening on uh, you know the regular Android if you don't have any gesture probably gonna have gestures for end tracking and we can open the multitasking that is gonna be over here uh, when you suspend an app so uh, clicking on it again uh, we're gonna be able to open it uh, like we had before. Here we go. It's pretty easy. It's pretty nice. It works pretty well right now. Uh, but yeah, we're not doing much. Uh, we can, uh, of course, click on it and stop, start to write something. And uh, this is our keyboard, by the way, that I'm pretty sure is not gonna be the final keyboard, as is very ugly indeed. And uh, yeah, we can't even resize it, but we can just move it around for now. So yeah, not the best option. I'm pretty sure they're still working on a better implementation for it. Uh, let's go back to the start menu because over here we have the home environment, over here we have the multitasking, over here we have the notifications, as you can see, uh, serial code, performance, blah, blah, blah. We can actually, as on our phone, 
uh, take them out like that. And we have the quick access menu. And over here, we have the ability to change internet or the Bluetooth, and it's gonna go through the settings. Uh, we have the boundary system, the pass-through that we, we can toggle in and out over here as well. Here we go. We have the pass-through window. That, that is very cool because it, we have the ability when we are in a, in a virtual environment to actually create like an area to use your mouse and keyboard or whatever we want to use uh, to actually interact with the system while we're still in a, you know, in the completely different environment, mic access, screen recording, recenter. Here we go, we have the dark theme, of course, uh, do not disturb, and then on different pages, the screencast, the recording, uh, the font side, and also the floor level to actually change it uh, over here. Uh, we don't have now the ability to go through those things because uh, it has to scan the environment, as you can see, and we don't have the camera available to actually do something like that. Uh, let's go back to the home because next things we can see are actually the settings that are gonna be over there. Here we go. And if you ever use an Android phone, this will look very, very familiar indeed because the, it's everything. It's pretty much the same of what we have on our phone uh, with all the settings for notifications and uh, stuff like that. This is the emulator, as you can see, and is running on Android 14, not 15, even if the, it's the latest release. Let's go to Play Store, of course, uh, so we see if there are some apps available to download. And uh, yeah, over here, uh, get to know your XR device, immerse yourself in the future of endless entertainment, creativity, and productivity. I'm not able to scroll uh, right now. Let's see if there's something down here. Let's make this bigger. And uh, yeah, there are some apps. For some reason, the scrolling is not working over here. All right, with the mouse, it seems to work. Uh, so let's go in the app again. And um, Mirrorscape Tabletop RPG. And uh, what it's saying is not your device is not actually compatible. Darn it, uh, this seems actually a very cool app, very similar to Demio, uh, but very cool graphics. Look at that, it looks amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's not available yet, also it doesn't have very good reviews, so I don't know what's going on <laughs> over here. Let's remember that this was just presented and the SDK is actually for people to start to make app for like a, this device. And uh, let's, let's unload Google Maps, right? Uh, we saw actually the demo on uh, on the keynote and yeah, once installed in theory they should appear over here so yeah we got maps and also google hurt uh let's go on maps first and yeah this seems to be the same interface that we have on tablets uh well i can't really do that uh let's try something for multitasking so uh let's open another app let's open google hurt here we go and this looks always extra cool my connection is very bad by the way but let's see if we can get in manhattan while we actually move the windows around because as you can see the multitasking over here it works a bit differently from uh, what we have on quest and on the vision pro because when you click on something the other one gets in complete transparency so you don't actually see the other app anymore unless these are completely not intersecting with each other and so at that point you can actually select one or the other one and then decide what you look at. I, I think that Google Earth will look absolutely stunning in 3D. Uh, I really can wait uh, to see that because it's an app that is absolutely fantastic in VR. Uh, but yeah, uh, so this is the situation with the multitasking. We can move them around as we want, also in depth, but it's something that we can't do right now uh, with the emulator. Uh, but yeah, when they go in front of each other, actually the one in front uh, gets a full focus and then clicking on the other, uh, we get uh, our kind of multitasking. So uh, probably not the best visually appealing thing, uh, but it does work. And as you can see, then all the apps stay open at the same time, or we can go in a multitasking again and uh, go back, for example, to our third app, uh, the Play Store and uh, yeah, we have it very big in front of us, so uh, this is the situation. Also, they should have a button to actually rearrange everything. I believe it's this one over here when you have more apps open. So tidy up. Uh, let's see what it does. And uh, yeah, 
it did nothing. <laughs> And here we have it guys, this was Android XR running not really on the Apple Vision Pro, but uh, kind of with the same way we can actually interact with the operating system and how we actually expect to interact uh, with the new Samsung XR headset that are gonna release in 2025. Because again, all the new headsets with Android XR will actually release in 2025. Probably we're gonna see something at CES 2025. I'm gonna attend, so uh, stay tuned on the channel because hopefully we're gonna see something there and overall what I, we saw uh, with this emulator is the fact that this operating system is very very similar to what uh, Apple is doing with the Vision OS of course as the idea is to actually use all our apps in 2D in different windows that we can place everywhere in the world and have uh, multitasking with them and everything like that but at the same time, there's also a big push for full immersive apps that we weren't able to see uh, with the emulator. There are no apps on the Play Store right now and we're not able to use it because we don't have any motion controllers or something like that. Uh, but it seems like Google really wants to bring a competition also to Meta when it comes to gaming. In fact, like, all the games created by, for Meta are actually created on a fork on Android that is a Horizon OS. So it will not be too difficult to actually adapt it to Android XR. Guy from Virtual Desktop said that it took around two, three hours to actually adapt. He's like hap uh, to work on Android XR. So yeah, everything seems to be very interesting because finally we're gonna have some big competition, not just to Apple uh, with their very expensive headset, but also with Meta for some gaming stuff, that, that's what we like. I really think they can work a bit more on design to make this thing look a bit better because uh, it feels a bit cheap. Uh, but yeah, functionality seems to be there. Uh, beside the keyboard, that's for sure, it's not the final one. Everything seems uh, working in a good state. But anyway, most important, what do you think about it? Do you think that this is actually the direction uh, for an operating system or do you prefer the way Meta is doing it with the dock that is always present and then going through libraries and something like that? Uh, I think this one seems a bit more seamless. Uh, it really feels like using your phone, using your Android phone uh, and uh, Kind of less confusing than the Vision Pro so far for now, uh, but yeah, it doesn't look as good. So hopefully they can work on that. Right, anyway, guys, this was Android XR emulating it on the PC and emulating on the Vision Pro. <laughs> that was a kind of a weird thing. If you want to do the same, the installation is super easy. I'm gonna leave the links in the description below. Uh, it takes some steps, but if you follow the guide with pictures and everything, uh, don't worry. You're not gonna get lost, it's gonna work. And uh, if you have a PC or even a Mac with the uh, ARM processors, uh, it's gonna be completely fine. And you can try Android XR yourself and see if you like it and what you would like to see changing. Or if you're a dev, make your own app for it. But anyway, guys, as always, if you liked the video, like. If you didn't like the video, like. Subscribe to the channel for more of VR tech. If you really love the channel, join the button there. Little and further, also the Patreon. Thanks to the Patreons for joining the channel, of course. Stay tuned for CES 2025. That's going to be soon, uh, from the 7th to the 10th of January. And I see you guys next video. Thanks for watching.